This is an addendum to our teaching titled The Blood of the Saints and the 70 Weeks of Daniel. Trust me, you don't want to miss this. Hey, this is Off the Cuff, and I'm Steve from TorahFamily.org. Okay, let's get right into it. The following is a correction specifically to when the 69 weeks of the 70 weeks of Daniel take place. As noted in the original teaching, there are patterns we should always be mindful of and be watching for each year. And as noted in that teaching, there are things on the calendar this year that can point to other years just the same. This correction is no different. While it points to biblical dates this year, it can do the same in other years to come just as well. We've looked at the 70 literal weeks of Daniel, as if the 70th week is the last one with Yeshua coming sometime within or after that last 70th week. However, after continuing to look into this, I believe this needs to be reconsidered. We know Yeshua comes to Jerusalem on the day of the Battle of Armageddon. He comes to Jerusalem from the east, splitting the Mount of Olives, with having blood already on him. The blood is from the war that takes place at the Battle of Armageddon that he had just won. The last thing on his agenda for that day is to clean house in Jerusalem. Thus, he comes to Jerusalem at the end of it all. This is covered in our teachings, Satan's Greatest Masquerade, Part 1 and Part 2. Now, up to this point, I believe the general consensus is this takes place at the end of the last one week, which occurs after the 69. However, when looking at this a little deeper, we find something different. When reading from Daniel, we see Yeshua comes at the end of the 69 weeks, a time frame that falls within the prophesied 70 weeks. So, let's look at it all. First, we see the 70 weeks are established here in verse 24. 70 weeks to bring everything to an end. We then read the following verses and assume they're discussing the first seven and then 62 weeks. 69 as a whole, with the last one week at the end. However, verse 25 shows these 69 weeks are the last 69 of the 70, and not the first 69. Let me say that again. Verse 25 shows those 69 weeks are the last 69 of the 70, and not the first 69 of the 70. You can see here, verse 25 shows that Yeshua comes to finish it all up at the end of the 69. Thus, these 69 weeks are the last 69 as it all completes with them. The word for from can carry the meaning among and even with in the sense of coming with or from among. Thus, the decree can come from within the 69 weeks and not be what starts them off. Because we see Yahweh dividing the 69 weeks by way of 7 weeks and then 62 weeks, we can't help but think it's at the start of the 62 weeks when we would actually see this decree go forth. Thus, it's from within or among the 69, being between the 7 and and the 62, the start of the 62. In fact, when we look at the decree or word to restore and rebuild Jerusalem, we see that it's the Hebrew word devar. Ironically enough, we see a devar go forth to restore the temple in the book of Haggai. Haggai chapter 1 verses 1 through 3. Knowing history is cyclical and that ancient times show what's to come, is this something we need to consider? A word going forth on rebuilding the temple. 
When we consider this a possible image of when things are to happen in the end, we find something of significance. This event in Haggai happened on the first day of the sixth month. It just so happens when we go an exact 62 weeks forward from that date this year, we land exactly on the last day of Sukkot next year, possibly pointing to the last 62 weeks until it all comes to a close. This points to a possible pattern we can't ignore. Now, how do these 69 weeks fit within the 70 weeks? Are they sequentially in order after the first week passes? Do they overlap somehow? If the decree to restore Jerusalem is what starts the 62 weeks, what would we see at the start of the seven weeks? That we don't know. Continuing in Daniel with verse 26, we see it expound on what happens at the end of the last 62 weeks. Let's break it down some. Daniel 9, 26. After the 62 sevens, the anointed one will be cut off and will have nothing. As noted before, the Hebrew doesn't say anointed one. It only says anointed. This is a reference to the anointed people of Yahweh, the holy ones mentioned in chapter 12, verse 7, who are fully broken and humbled at the end. This is covered in our teaching, the one-year tribulation and the return of Yeshua. Verse 26 continues, The people of the ruler who will come will destroy the city and the sanctuary. Many assume this to be the people of the Antichrist. But this is the Joel II army following behind Yeshua as mentioned in the original teaching. They will clean out Jerusalem. Remember, the Antichrist doesn't destroy Jerusalem. He builds it up under his authority, making it an abomination in the eyes of Yahweh. Thus, Yeshua coming to clean house at the end. The verse continues, The end will come like a flood. War will continue until the end, and desolations have been decreed. This seems to imply war will be going on throughout these 69 weeks, at least the last 62 weeks. Continuing, verse 27, He will confirm a covenant with many for one seven. In the middle of the seven, he will put an end to sacrifice and offering. The Hebrew here says he will strengthen a covenant, not make a covenant. And it doesn't say for one seven. And it says to many, not with many. In the midst of that week, he brings all the abominable sacrifices mentioned in Isaiah 66 to an end. This is when Yeshua and his army clean house in Jerusalem, noted here in verse 6. Though they've been doing sacrifices that look legitimate, they weren't by a priesthood established by Yahweh, thus making them an abomination. Continuing in verse 27 of Daniel 9. And on a wing of the temple, he will set up an abomination that causes desolation until the end that is decreed is poured out on him. The word for wing can literally mean edge, and abomination is plural. This goes right in line with our teaching, What is the Idol of Jealousy?, where we show how the ark and the tent of meeting will be set up on the north edge of the temple mount. The phrase, he will set up, doesn't even exist in the Hebrew. Plus, there's no word for him at the end. The literal word is actually desolate or desolated, meaning it's the place itself. The literal Hebrew here can actually read as, and on edge abominations desolate until end, decreed poured out on desolate. Thus, all of verse 27 can actually read like this. He will strengthen the covenant to many in one week. In midst of the week, the sacrifice and offering end. On the edge, abominations desolating will continue until the end decreed is poured out on the desolated. Meaning, 
The abominable sacrifices will continue until the last day when Yeshua comes to clean house. On the day of the battle of Armageddon. That last day, which comes at the end of the 69 weeks. That's the important thing to note here. This all happens at the end of the given 69 weeks. Most specifically, the end of the given 62 weeks. Again, this all points to the end of the 69 weeks. It doesn't point to the 69 weeks happening first. No, it points to the 69 being what brings it all to an end. Those 69 weeks are divided by 7 weeks and then 62. Exactly how these 69 weeks are played out is yet to be seen. Again, are they sequential with the 70? Do the 7 and 62 overlap any at all? What's the significance to the first 7 weeks? Surely, we would see something regarding them, right? Only time will tell. But I felt it necessary to show you the 69 weeks, and definitely the 62, are truly what closes it all out. Not the last one week that many are looking for, or what many say, 7 years. Well, that's all I have. Think about it. Pray about it. But more than anything, be a doer of the word and not a hearer only. Until next time, Shalom.